Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel or welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm the Classy Comic, you can call me the Classy Comic, and today we are going to be reading an excerpt about Joan of Arc from my 100 page book. Alright, let's get to it. Joan of Arc was one of the finest humans to have ever lived, and she helped to shape France into what it is today. She was a hot-tempered teen who was named the deliverer of France and crowned the King of Reims within an 18-month period. Her life began in the humble village of Domremy, and she loved her home and her fluffy gray kitten who later became renowned. She stayed true to her humble roots, her home in Domremy, and her love for her people. She was a devout Christian, and no one could t pull her away from the word of God. St. Catherine, St. Margaret, and Michael were sent to her by God to give her visions and news about the British advancements. From the time that she was 14 years old, she was sent visions. She was an extremely patriotic young lady whose dedication to France was unwavering. She grew into a resilient young woman who commanded authority while still being kind and generous. She respected herself and always kept another female with her no matter where she traveled. Joan of Arc was an honorable person and a renowned military leader who eventually was named a Catholic saint. She led an army against the British and never shed a drop of blood while doing so. Joan was a caring, creative woman with, an, with excellent moral values and a heart of gold. Despite her poverty, she stayed productive and strong and remained a capable, devout Christian. She was a great military leader who followed the directions of God's angles, St. Catherine, St. Margaret, and Archangel Michael. Like Moses, she was a bold character who was spoken to directly by God. Both she and Moses have become popular Sunday school characters whose people were persecuted. As written in Joshua 1.17, No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give to them. Be strong and very courageous. They were both courageous and bold in all they could do to protect their people and their land. Like the people of old, God was with her. Joan was innocent no matter what the Catholic Church claimed because she never killed anybody and her career was completely bloodless. Joan was brave as God's prophetess until the end, until the, meh, until the flames consumed her like a ravaging wolf that consumed the people who had died during the plague. Endurance and nonconformity serves Joan well, both as a young woman and when she became the leader of the French army at 17. In the 15th century, women were viewed as insignificant house runners who had children and cooked. She was a peasant, and that was a very difficult situation to escape. Peasants were heavily tax taxed by the upper two estates, the nobility and clergy. There were three estates, with the nobility as the first as, as the second estate and the clergy as the first, both of which were not subject to taxation and lived off the backs of the other 90% of the poor French population, also known as the third estate, which include, included peasants, serfs, and rich landowners. Joan's hometown of Domremy was exempt from taxes in, taxes in 1429 as one of the many presents to Joan from the King of France. Even though she got many things for her contribution, the only thing that she did not get was the tax exemption when taxation was again imposed on Domremy during the French Revolution. Once Joan rose to the top, she had Paris and France in her grip and the Hundred Years' War under her heel. Joan had a short temper, and once, in, once placed in control of the French army, the teenage peasant did not hesitate to correct important knights for cursing, behaving badly, skipping mass, or disrespecting her battle plans. She even accused her noble patrons of cowardice and spinelessness with their affairs with the English. While commander of the French army, Joan of Arc did not participate in active combat or horseplay. She acquired Charlemagne's sword, but refused to have it sharpened and brought back to good condition, even though it was corroded, because she wanted to command authority, authority rather than kill people. Once she was captured, she was kept in a stronghold prison for a year without much food or exercise. During the captivity, she spent her time thinking and having visions of her trials. With each trial, she grew weaker and weaker, met closer and closer to the edge of cracking. An edict was signed prohibiting her from wearing men's clothes. There were a number of guards who wanted her dead. The person guarding her prison cell swapped her women's attire for men's clothes and caused her to violate the edict, which led to her death. That day, she was sent to court and found guilty. 
The church made her sign a document saying she was guilty because she was a witch, a friend of evil spirits who wore men's clothing. The guard that helped her met to sign this took the pale, limp hand of Joan of Arc, the man of Orleans, and the deliverer of France, to her death. On the day of her death, she prophesied the French Revolution by saying, Oh, cruel, cruel, cruel it is to treat me so, and must my body that has never been defiled is today be turned to ashes? Ah, uh, sooner I would have my head cut off seven times than, su than suffer this woeful death. This prophesied the invention of the guillotine, and she was taken away to be burned the next day. It is Joan of Arc's fascinating history that sets her apart from the rest. She was nothing but a girl, and she helped in the Hundred Years' War. She foretold that in five years, the last English, English settlement would be removed from the French soil, and the rebuilding of France would take another 15 years. Joan of Arc, at the age of 16, had no promise of romance and lived in the dull village on the edge of civilization. She had been nowhere and seen nothing. She knew, no she knew none but simple shepherd folk and had never seen a person of note. She hardly knew what a soldier looked like and had never ridden a horse before she became commander. She had never held a warlike weapon in her hand and could neither read nor write, but she developed new war strategies. Joan of Arc changed society through her poor upbringing and dedicated early life, her heroics and bravery in battle, her courage, her defiance during the trial, and her role as a Catholic saint. She marched a grueling trip to Reims and crowned the king. She used a heavenly oil that was brought down by, for, from heaven by a dove, and neither the flask nor the oil was of earthly origin. Her people thought God chose them, the ruler by divine right. She was also the first person to wear the ever-popular bob haircut, which originated in Paris in 1909. Joan of Arc was a truly remarkable person, inside and out. Hey everybody, that was fun. Now, if you liked the video, please like the video and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. This is obviously the best YouTube channel ever, and I will see you in the next video, alright? Bye!